Jonah is a 1986 West White Potter 19, built by International Marine in Inglewood, California. She is a capable coastal cruiser that can be rigged and launched from a boat ramp in less than one hour. We start at the bow of the boat where an eight pound Danforth anchor is mounted on the pulpit using a piece of PVC pipe attached to two large hose clamps. When stowing, the anchor is dropped into the PVC pipe shank first. Moving to the side of the vessel, we see the mast is stowed resting on the pulpit, along with the tie-down strap holding the bow down onto the trailer. A block and tackle is used to raise the mast and is kept in position attached to the forestay at the quick release lever. Amidship we see Jonah's deadlights and reflective window coverings along with the inner and outer jib sheet tracks. The inner track is mounted on the cabin top and is used for the small jib, allowing it to be sheeted at an optimal angle. Here we see a close-up shot showing the swivel cleat that is used to control the jib sheet. Moving to the stern of the boat, we have the dock line cleat, a fishing pole holder and a rope clutch. The rope clutch is used to control the code zero sheet. The transom carries a swim ladder, the blue water kick-up rudder and a 6 horsepower long shaft outboard motor. Here we get a sense of the blue water nature of this rudder. It is thicker than the standard rudder, being one and a quarter inches thick, with a heavier stainless steel rudder post and cheeks. The one and one quarter inch rudders from Ruddercraft are not prone to warping and reputedly have never failed on a West White Potter. In between the motor and the rudder is mounted the AIS antenna. This antenna is mounted here so as to avoid the complication of having to plug, unplug the cable when raising and lowering the mast. Here we have a side view of the rudder in its kicked up position, as well as the adjustable backstay block and tackle. The backstay block and tackle is attached to a chain plate bolted to the transom. Moving into the cockpit, we're looking at the starboard dockline cleat, which also has attached a turning block for the Code Zero sheet. This is the mounting point for the auto tiller. A cover protects the tiller from the sun. Here can be seen the outboard's alternator electrical hookup. The six gallon gas can, which gives Jonah a motoring range of approximately 90 nautical miles. Looking forward, we have the companionway hatchboards. To port of the companionway, we have the port jib sheet, jib halyard, and the jib downhaul. To starboard, we have the starboard jib sheet, the main halyard, and the Code Zero halyard. The companionway hatchboards detach into two pieces via a special hinge. The lower hatchboard can be placed back into the companionway to increase the freeboard and prevent down flooding 
in the event of the cockpit getting filled with water. Looking onto the starboard side of the cabin top, we see the main halyard, the code zero halyard, a winch and the inner jib sheet track. The main sail can be raised and reefed without needing to go on deck. Indeed, the jib also can be raised and lowered without going forward. The companionway hatch cover incorporates a sunbrella splash guard designed to prevent water intrusion into the cabin. It can be secured with a bungee and is quite effective. Unique features at the top of the mast include a combination steaming and anchor light mounted to the mast with a custom 3D printed bracket. The Code Zero halyard is hoisted via a block attached to a bale high on the mast. Here's the view looking from the below deck's starboard seating. Whenever the boat is de-rigged, the mainsail and boom are kept on the port side foxhole sleeping berth. The companionway steps have a useful storage area behind them. It contains the trash can, spare fenders, the shore power cable and the two burner camping stove. Here we look into the port side quarter berth used as stowage. Velcro attaches the Reflectix window coverings. Looking down the starboard quarter berth, we see the cool box which slides out to enable access. Inside the cabinets are a number of crates containing food and equipment. The quote unquote enclosed head is on the starboard side along with the seven gallon water storage container. I'm not one of those bucket and chuck it aficionados. My preference is more for the pack it in, pack it out approach, similar to what wilderness hikers do. As such, I've found a combination of bin liner, kitty litter and ziplocks to be highly effective. And what's more, there's no holding tank or chemicals involved and thus zero odour. The electrical panel and handheld VHF. When the sails are unbent, things can get quite crowded in the foxhole. Here we see two sails and the inflatable kayak. The keel winch system uses Dyneema and a quick attachment using a single bolt, allowing for its removal when the boat is in use. Dry deck keeps the skipper's feet dry and the cabin sole looking tidy. More storage further forward. Away, hold away, a hold away, Joe. A 
Away, hold away. A hold away together. Away, hold away. A hold away to Here we see the battery charger mounted to a custom forward flotation plywood bulkhead. It's a bit dark, but if you look carefully, you can just about see the 75 ampere hour gel battery 